Hi everybody, it's uh, good to be here again doing another video from the Vicarage and uh, we're continuing to uh, think about you all and, and pray for you all at this time. Of course overnight we've had more news from the Prime Minister so things are going a little bit deeper uh, now um, but we've all of course have to play our part in, uh, in what's going on at the moment. Um, the letter has come out to, to you all as well do be mindful of Team Shottery, which is being headed up by um, Sylvain at the moment. So if you are at home and you can't get out and you need some groceries or you need a prescription picking up or whatever, then contact either myself or Sylvain and we'll send someone to you to arrange with you what you will need. Um, email addresses, oh, I've got something like 110 emails now. Um, if there are other people who want to come on the email list, um, so that I can get these videos out um, and also my letters to you, then just again email me and I will make sure that you go on the list. Um, same with phone numbers as well. Um, what Sue and I are looking at doing um, by Sunday is hoping to organise a service at 10 o'clock on Sunday morning from the Vicarage, um, which we'd like you to be involved in through a website called Zoom. Um, don't worry if that's not familiar to you, it's only just become familiar to me. Um, but it, it's a way of connecting so that we can all join in together and see each other as well on, on laptops and phones and whatever. But again, look out on your emails and we will give you information about how to log on to that and, and hopefully on Sunday um, we'll be able to worship together in some way um, on that morning. And don't panic about it, don't be scared of it. It is actually very simple to use, even I have been able to use it and um, that is really and, saying something. And I will probably be able to use it as well, so that is saying something as well. It's been really good as well that you've uh, lit candles this week, particularly on Mothering Sunday evening, and sent some of your images through to us. Uh, I'm sorry you didn't get our candle image, uh, for some you did, some didn't, some did. Um, but I would urge you to continue, as we're doing here at the Vicarage, to continue lighting your candles um, and keeping them burning. We've also put Christmas tree lights out on the tree. Yes, it's March, we know. Christmas tree lights as well. So Christians have always been bonkers, so that's all right. But it just made me think that during the 1970s, the early 70s, when I was a very young boy, um, we had those strikes. Um, when um, electricity was all cut off and i never forget my mum getting candles out from underneath the sink and giving my brother Chris and I candles and i never forget an image of being in the dark as a, as a young boy of about seven um, sat in the living room at home lighting the candles with my brother and just enjoying the glow of the candles as we looked at each other as we knelt at, at the living room floor but the important thing was that stuck with me was the image even though the darkness of the living room was still there, it was as though the light pushed the darkness away to the edge of the room. And that was the sort of image that stuck with me. And I want to just to offer that image to you, that although we are going through um, a dark time at the moment, it's a challenging time for all of us, that, that light of Christ, of Jesus said, I'm the light of the world, and whoever follows me will never walk in darkness. And so hold on to that image as you continue to pray and light a candle when you do evening prayer or morning prayer um, together with us. And light a candle, put it on the coffee table or whatever as a reminder of those words of Jesus that I am the light of the world. So one of the things that um, I think is a concern for lots of people is that our daily routines have been thrown out of the window and I know that there's a lot of concern around for people's mental health and we've been thinking about that quite a bit and one of the things that I think is really really helpful um, is the traditions of the monastic communities. Actually Craig and I read a book uh, a few years ago called Monk Habits for Everyday... It's not oh. a plug, I'm not plugging it, Here's I'm not, I'm not suggesting earlier. you go and buy it on Amazon and read it, it's just it's a good visual aid. Oh, okay. That, that was, that was Monk really, habits. Yeah, monk for habits everyday. for everyday people. And actually, it's something that I found particularly helpful over the years to actually root my life in a routine that actually can keep me going when times are really tough. In fact, actually, Craig, you were going to say something, weren't you, about Max Lucado's book? about anchoring yeah. deep that that works. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm going to recommend this book, not now, I can't give you too much at once, but when we get to Holy Week I'm going to recommend this book. Um, it's called Six Hours One Friday by Max Lucado 
And in that book, he, he, he talks about um, a hurricane that was due to arrive. Um, and everybody who had boats and, and uh, boats on the, on the water were lashing their boats to moorings at the side of the riverbanks. And he said he wandered down and some boats were like boats caught in a spider's web. People were so frightened of the hurricane, they were lashing their boats to their moorings on the side of the riverbanks. But old Jed came along, tutting and, and shaking his head, and he said, when that hurricane comes, it's going to rip those boats apart. Because you've got to know boats, and you've got to know hurricanes. And everyone said, well, what do we do? How can we keep our boats safe? And Jed said, you've got to go out right into the middle of the water and put three anchor points down deep and just sit it through. But the, the anchor will hold. And uh, I've always remembered that, and um, uh, you know, and that'll be in the book, which we'll, we'll I'll recommend to you a bit later on. But anchoring deep is something we can do when we actually adopt monk habits for everyday people. There are actually kind of three strands, if you like, to the monastic life. There's community, actually learning to live together. Now, of course, at the moment, we're all learning to live apart. But actually, strangely, in these last couple of weeks, I've spoken to more people, um, you know, friends, family, that actually sometimes I go for much longer periods without actually having any contact with them. So actually, there's an opportunity here for us to pull together as a community in a way that we have never done before. The second is prayer, actually anchoring our lives in prayer. Because when we have those solid foundations, it enables us to feel rooted when everything around us feels as if it's changing so incredibly quickly. And then the third bit of the, the strand is actually to think about how we live. How do we live in these very uncertain and strange times? And of course, again, one of the things that the monastic tradition teaches us is about actually having a rhythm of life. And when our lives have been turned upside down, actually creating a rhythm in our daily lives is really, really important. I was actually talking to my boss this morning, quite early this morning on the phone, and we were talking about the importance of lipstick. Now, you might laugh and think that that's, I use a, bit, it all the time. <laughs> that that's a bit flippant, but actually, if we just stayed in our pyjamas all day, it would be very easy to get down, getting dressed in the morning, putting our lipstick on. I'm not suggesting everybody does that, but you know what I mean. It's about actually establishing a rhythm wow. and puncturing the day with the daily offices as well, saying our prayers in the morning, saying our prayers maybe at lunchtime, and again in the evening gives us anchor points, back to the anchors again, in our day to enable us to feel rooted. Yeah, you might have saw me going, ooh, somewhere like that then, it's just that Elliot's running down the stairs, and I'm going, be, be quiet, be quiet while we finish videoing. Um, but yeah, I think all that's really, really important. So we're gonna, we're gonna tie this video up now uh, by saying that uh, we, we will pray tonight, we'll do evening prayer. Um, if you haven't got those orders of service that I sent out, then again, email me, I can send them out. We'll send you some others as well to use. Um, but do say evening prayer tonight, light a candle, um, remember us as well at the Vicarage as we remember you, as well as your fellow Christians, um, but remember too that Jesus is the light of the world and the darkness, as John says, has never extinguished it. So God bless you and Bye, we will see you all soon. Bye.